So we're going to talk about detoxing, right? Because there's detoxing drinks and detoxing shakes and juices and cleanses and detoxing diets. And what does detox even mean? And if we don't know what it means, how do you even know if you're doing it right, right? Are you, is the supplement that you bought even helping? So here's the truth. Your body right now, as we speak, is already detoxing right this second. Whether you like it or not, you have a built-in detox system and it's going on at all times. Now, there are some things that you could do to help it along. And of course, there's some things that you could do to slow it down. But you first need to understand what detox means before you start shopping. Now, I want to warn you, this particular episode is going to get pretty technical. But for those of you who want to really understand the information, stick with me for this ride because I'm going to make it the best that I can to make it easy to understand. But I really, really want you to grasp the complexity of what detox actually means. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, why not? And if you're listening to the podcast, I have a really weird painting behind me. That's about all you're missing today. So what is detox? Let's start with a definition. You know, I always start with definition because people throw this word around detox all the time. But what do we really mean by it? So in its simplest form, detox means to remove the toxin, right? To remove the harmful substance from a system or an environment. Detoxing, right? Detoxify. So when we're referring to detoxifying, we're talking about the body's process of eliminating or neutralizing toxins that we are ingesting or exposed to. Now, why is this so hard? If I'm exposed to something, why can't my body just get rid of it? Like, why is it so hard? Like, let me just sweat it out or poop it out or urine it out. Like, why can I just drink more water and flush it out? Here's the thing. Here is the thing that makes detoxifying so difficult. Our blood, our urine, our sweat, and much of our poop is acts like water. The fancy word for that is hydrophilic, water loving. But most toxic substances are what we call lipophilic, meaning they act and behave like fat. So the toxins, they behave like fat, but you have a plumbing system that works on water. And you know that fat doesn't dissolve in water, right? So think of putting oil in a cup of water. It doesn't mix. So the fats, they don't dissolve. They don't come out by themselves. And they tend to stick in the body's fat region instead of getting washed down and flushed away. So in order to get a toxin out of the body, we need a whole system, a whole internal factory that converts the toxins into something that can be transported in your urine and your stool. This conversion from like a fat soluble, fat like toxin to make it more like water is the process of detoxification. Okay, now here's where we're jumping in and getting technical. There's three phases of detoxification. Phase one, transformation. Phase two is conjugation. And then three is excretion, getting it out. So phase one, transformation, gets the toxin ready. Phase two, converts it into water-soluble, water-like, and packages and makes it ready for excretion, which is the third part, getting it out of the body. Phase one and two, the transformation and conjugation, happen in the liver. The liver is the central processing station for all toxins. We cannot detoxify without it. It's the kitchen that gets the ingredients and prepares them to be packaged out through poop and in your kidneys through urine and your skin and your lungs. Okay, so let's dive a little deeper. Transformation. Okay, transformation, phase one. It's Think of it like you're running a kitchen. You have all these ingredients, that's your toxins, and you first have to chop them up. Okay, so that's phase one. During this phase, the body picks up these dangerous molecules and starts transforming it into hopefully less harmful products that is starting the process of getting rid of them. So we're talking about alcohol, caffeine, medications, pollutions, food additives, they get chopped up. Now, if we're gonna keep this analogy of the kitchen, the liver is that main chef in the kitchen and it uses knives to slice up these toxins. These knives are called enzymes. And I just wanna bring our attention, there's so many enzymes, but to one enzyme called cytochrome P450. It's a super common, it's used a lot in chopping up these toxins. And the reason I bring that up is because there are a lot of things that we can do that will interfere with this enzyme, with this knife, with the cytochrome P450. For example, you might have heard, don't take grapefruit juice with certain medications. And the reason is because it slows down this enzyme. It slows down this knife, which means the medication will be slow to be processed. So already technical and we're already in stage one. Like you already should start appreciating that detox is way more than just drinking water. We're only in a phase one. So what's next? So we're chopping up these ingredients, but chopping can be a little messy, right? And sometimes it can make things more reactive, more dangerous. Like think of chopping an onion can make your eyes water, like it's reacting. 
So when you start to chop up these chemicals, they actually start releasing charged particles called free radicals. And if free radicals are not neutralized, they can lead to a kitchen disaster or in our case, inflammation and some serious things. So we can't just leave them chopped up. We have to get them into phase two of the detoxification, which is the conjugation. Because when they're chopped up, they're like those raw onions and they're pretty dangerous. Phase two, conjugation. So phase two is we take these chopped ingredients, these toxins, and we add a little handle to them, right? We have to put a little baking mitta packet that can then be transferred out through our water system. The conjugation is like adding a handle to these packets. And there's different kinds of handles, okay? So there's nine different pathways here. Each one has a really long sounding name. I'm going to go through some of them just so you can begin to understand the complexity of the word detox. So sulfation basically means it takes these toxins, adds a sulfur tag to it, and sulfation breaks down hormones, thyroid hormones, neurotransmitters like your epinephrine, your norepinephrine, BPA from plastics gets done with sulfation, triclosan from antibacterial soaps gets there, estrogens gets broken down in this pathway. The next pathway is glucuronidation. I'm trying to keep the kitchen metaphor going. So it's like wrapping up the leftovers in cling film so that they won't spill. And this pathway is in charge of sex hormones, your testosterone, your estrogen, DHEA, more thyroid hormones. It's in charge of some mold. It's in charge of some medications. Next pathway is glutathione conjugation. This one is all about protection. It grabs things that can hurt our cells, like heavy metals. It tries to bubble wrap it as it packages it out. So glutathione conjugation is in charge of pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, molds, and other medications, also alcohol. We have amino acid conjugation. That is when you take an amino acid, and that's the handle that's being put on to neutralize. So that's for aspirin, food dyes, nail polish, stain removers, and we're exposed to all that. We have to get it out somehow. Amino acid conjugation does that. Methylation, you might have heard that. Methylation takes like the chemical leftovers, like hormones and heavy metals, and seals them away in a way that they don't react. So again, methylation helps with excess estrogen, with certain neurotransmitters, with the phenols found in Botox, with vaccine preservatives. Those have to get detoxified. It also detoxifies certain chemicals that are known to cause cancer, like things in cigarette smoke and dyes and perfumes. Moving on to another Asian, acetylation. Acetylation, again, it's trying to get these leftovers, these broken up toxins and take them out. Acetylation works with, on caffeine, tobacco, histamine, serotonin, and other carcinogenic things, things that cause cancer. I know there's a lot of words and I know it's a long list, but I want to show you how phase two has all these different pathways that take these toxins and help get them out. Now, for phase two to really happen, you need specific nutrients in your food, which we're going to talk about in a bit. But missing these nutrients actually affects the detoxification process and toxins can build up in your body. What I really want you to get is how complicated the word detoxification is. Okay, like what is that? People just throw it around. They have no idea how complicated it is. Let's move on to phase three, elimination, getting it out of the body. So this is your body's garbage disposal system, right? Its main job is to escort the package that we made in phase one and phase two and get it out of the body. This is the exit strategy, whether it's stool formation or urine formation or sweat formation. Sometimes we breathe it out. These are all the ways to get out what we processed in phase one or phase two. Some questions, something that might come up to you as we're talking about is, well, if my body detoxifies all the time, why do I even need to support it? Why do I need to do anything? It's, it's doing it on its own. The problem is, there's two problems. One, we are on overload, right? Our modern lives have exposed us to an unprecedented number of substances, right? The things we eat, the things we're exposed to, the pesticides on our fruits, the chemicals everywhere. So our internal detox system has not evolved as fast as the chemicals have evolved in our system. So part one is on overload. And part two, remember I told you that these systems need certain nutrients to work. And most of us, our diets, our nutrition are not filled with the things that we need, right? In fact, it's filled with things we don't need. So just to get like a quick glimpse of what I mean, methylation needs B12, needs B6, needs magnesium, needs zinc, needs SAMI. Glucuronidation needs something called calcium deglucurate, the downsides of being alive. Green tea extract, calcium, magnesium. Glutathione conjugation, as you would expect, needs some glutathione, but also needs alpha-lipoic acids, selenium, vitamin C, vitamin E, 
sulfation needs certain amino acids. Amino acid conjugation needs different amino acids, also magnesium. So as you can see, you need a lot of nutrition to let these pathways work. So between being overloaded and most of us not eating right, it's really a problem to detoxify. Oh, one thing I didn't mention that everything I mentioned, all these supplements are phase two, but in phase one, one of the biggest players is fiber. And most of us don't eat enough fiber. So what happens if we have too many toxins? Okay, who cares? I'm not eating the magnesium. I'm not eating my fiber. Leave me alone. It affects us on a cellular level, right? There's going to be buildup. Those toxins are going to be building up. It affects our mitochondria. If you don't remember what that is, powerhouse of the cell. And when our mitochondria are overwhelmed, that's how we get sick. And that's how we age before our time. So how do you know if you have too many toxins? Decline in cognitive function, your brain fog, difficulty concentrated, unexpected mood swings. Number two, if you're exhausted, right? If you have a constant toxic buildup, you're not going to have energy. You can have a lack of energy. Sleep disturbance. When your toxins interfere with your body's natural rhythm, it's hard to get a good night's sleep. And when you don't sleep, you can't detoxify. So you're like caught in a loop. If your belly hurts, being bloated, discomfort also means that your body's struggling to eliminate the toxins. And then there's physical symptoms, migraines, headaches, skin conditions like rashes or acne flare-ups, right? So we're talking about this internal battle that's coming as a headache, coming as a rash, joint pain. This all is a sign of mitochondrial damage. We understand detoxification. We know what it means. We understand that we need all these things in our body. What can we do to support the body's detoxification? So if it wasn't clear until now, first thing we need is really good nutrition, right? And you know, I say the word nutrition, not diet, because this is not a weight loss conversation. It's also not just anti-inflammatory. I want you to start thinking of your food as detoxifier, because now you know we need fiber for phase one. Now you have a list of supplements that you hopefully are getting in your food for phase two. So we start there. But also you have to limit the junk, because all those words on the ingredient list that you don't understand, your body has to work to detoxify those. It has to go somewhere. It doesn't just magically go into your poop. You need Your body has to do phase one, phase two, all this repackaging of your processed foods, your sugars, your unhealthy fats. So don't add more work to your body. And when we talk about nutrition, we're talking about eating the colors, the phytonutrients, right? Because eating colors is your supplement list. It's your B6. It's your B12. Like all those colors of your plant-based food is the list of supplements that you're going to need. You also must eat proteins. Remember I told you that at least two of those pathways use amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, right? So you need proteins, you need to help it along. And you also need good fats because omega-3 helps this whole process along. So we have nutrition, a new way of looking at nutrition, utilizing nutrition with the understanding that every single thing you bring that is good to the plate is helping the detox process. And everything that you bring that is processed is actually slowing down your detox process. Next is movement. Movement, because nothing stagnant is good, right? Anything that's kind of sitting there or not moving is not good. Exercise increases blood flow. It helps transport, the, it gets the waste going. And movement makes you sweat. And that's another way of eliminating phase one and phase two products. And you need sleep. You know, I say this all the time. I don't care how much gluten-free ice you're eating. If you're not sleeping, you're not on point, period, full stop. While we sleep, it helps us detoxify. It helps the liver. It helps us get rid of things. So it really helps us work more efficiently on this pathway. So yes, I know every week I talk about movement. I talk about nutrition. I talk about sleep in every episode. But this episode is no different. But what's different is that now you understand there's another layer to it all. You need all of this to detoxify. So before you run out to get the next detox 30, 60, 90 day protocol, you need to ask yourself, do I have these three things on point? Am I moving? How's your eating? How's your sleeping? Because if they aren't on point, there's no protocol in the world that will help you, right? Save your money. Don't buy the drink. If you're still eating junk and not sleeping. That being said, it wouldn't be an episode if I didn't give you some supplements because everyone wants to know what supplements they could do. So now you understand the role of the supplements. They're there to support phase two. So of course we have glutathione because we need that for glucuronidation. We need it for glutathione conjugation. A supplement called calcium D glucurate, super helpful. B vitamins for methylation, right? You need your B2, your B6, your B9, your B12. Get it all in there because that helps methylation. NAC, 
because NAC becomes glutathione, and you already know that that's important. For sulfation, you need sulforaphane, which basically is found in your cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cabbage. It has it naturally in there, but you're welcome to get it as a supplement as well. Milk thistle. Milk thistle is needed for glucuronidation, but it's also really, really helpful for your liver and everything's happening in your liver, so help that along. Magnesium. Magnesium is like a super supplement because it is part of like 30 different reactions in your body. So there's your list for phase two. Here's the recap. Next time someone throws around the word detox, I want you to raise your eyebrows and be like, do you even know what you're talking about? Like, don't just say that word. No, drinking water is not the answer. I mean, it's important, but that's not the whole answer. Because now, now you know, after this episode, now you understand how complicated that word really is. Our body is amazing and has a built-in detox system. And most of it does occur without any intervention. But with a world that's increasing in toxins by the second, our systems can become burdened. So now we understand how to support our body's detox process. And I want you to know that before you go and get any protocol or magic drink, I want you to know that the real detox happens by making the right choices every day, all day. And of course, if you want to work with me and my team, or if you want my free course, just go to the website or to our links or anything at The New Method and get started on your journey. Why? Because you always knew there was a better way. I'll see you guys next week.